Welcome back to Classic Replay. This one is the top 40 best new games for the Amstrad CPC. If you like this video, please subscribe, ring that bell, like, comment and share. CPC Adventure was originally released in French only. A year later, it was converted into English language and it's one of the best click and play games uh, adventure games on the Amstrad CPC. It takes up two huge whopping discs and it features characters from various Amstrad CPC games, along with very famous iconic locations. There's a pleasant little surprise awaiting International Karate Plus fans at the Karate School. And there's a great little homage to Nebulous where you have to enter the submarine. It really is terrific stuff. There's only one CP Soccer, one CP Soccer. But in all seriousness, this is actually a really good uh, footy game for the Amstrad. Completely came out of the blue for me. And although most will compare it to sensible soccer, firstly, it's nowhere near as good, but it's good in its own way. There's the league option, the World Cup, all the players are there. And just check out some of the goals you can score. Look at this. Takes it on the bounce, head down and runs across the wing. A quick pass and bosh! Pick that sucker out the net. I'm absolutely mad for it, which is why it makes the list. And I've already won the league with Aston Villa. Groups is graphically brilliant, sonically brilliant, and this is so addictive. You can have music playing in-game, or just stick with sound effects, or both. The presentation is real next level stuff. The graphics look 16-bit. I'm not even sure if this should be possible on an 8-bit let alone an Amstrad CPC. It's one I can't stop playing. I've been playing since its release and I love to recommend it. Can't recommend it enough. The chap behind this is an absolute CPC legend. I hope if this list achieves anything, it's to introduce Amstrad owners or honestly anybody looking to discover the Amstrad CPC for the first time ever. When I first played uh, Miss Input, it reminded me of a few games I'd played back in the day on the 3DS and on my iPhone. The way you bounce off the walls to reach higher levels is absolutely fantastic. The game starts you out early and easy. It achieves everything the original game set out to do, which actually won the Retro Dev, I think, 2019 competition, but builds on that and delivers an even better experience. I seem to remember in the game Shinobi in the arcade, you could bounce off the walls on one of the levels to get to the top, and I think this is built on that idea. The University of Alicante is strong with this one. The Wild West on your Amstrad CPC. What's even better about this game is the program has released Outlaws Reloaded, which fixed a lot of the issues and bugs and slowdown with the graphics. But this is a fantastic little game and it reminds me of Cabell uh, in the arcade and the Ocean uh, version on the ZX Spectrum. The Amstrad version of Cabell was uh, a bit dire really if I'm honest. But this is fast paced, there's lots of action. It's up there probably better than the likes of Operation Wolf. There's a good amount of levels involved. It starts out easy, but the difficulty rises at just the right level. And it features bags of gratuitous, drawn out violence. Fans of dynamic games, army moves, navy moves, game over and the likes, will feel right at home with space moves. Nope, this is not a game by Donald Trump. It's just released from those awesome buggers, Retrobrite Studios. Some people are calling it Space Moves 2, but I think it's an improvement over the original Space Moves. Most people will recognize the parachuting in bit from Sly Spy. And this section is basically army moves, but massively improved. Can leave the jumps on the chasms right to the last second. The problem with army moves is the collision detection was that accurate, it would have killed you if you'd have tried to do that. There's a shoot em up section as well. And seriously, what's not to like? It's just more of the original and it's great. No idea how this game even arrived in my disk drive, where it's come from. I think it might have been part of the CPC Retro Dev competition, but I personally absolutely love it and I had to include it in the list. 
You literally defy physics and lose traction as you drift your way through this awesome arcade game. More options would be great for this game. An obvious option would be to race against other opponents. Maybe even online opponents, who knows? But the learning curve is steep, but at the same time it's great because you're learning how to hold a consistent drift. I love the control of the car, I love the graphics. This particular circuit I'm on here, it's really difficult, but you can complete it. Ah, uh, Harlak, Jarlak, whatever you call it. I really enjoyed playing this. It's a short game once you get the hang of it. And some people have complained that the graphics look messy. But for me, the main character, the protagonist, is really well detailed. As are the enemy character sprites and various locations. It made the list simply because it's fun and I came back to it. And I think there is an important point. The games in this list are the games I've come back to the most. And other people might think there are other games more worthy. And they are probably 100% right, but those aren't the games I'm coming back to. I absolutely love Vector Vault. It's got a real good challenge. I even bought the physical release. I can't be sure, but I think it came on 3-inch disc. And it also came with a USB stick and a CD-ROM as well. In like a, a DVD-style case. But it's so addictive. It's a navigate the hell out of here type game. You actually set the pace and there's all sorts of locations to traverse. It's easy to overlook this one because of the graphics, but as things move on, the complexity ramps up and it's just an absolute joy. This one's quite an oldie now, but it's definitely a goldie. And I think it was one of the first new post Amstrad CPC shoot 'em up games that was any good. The scrolling was really good. It included end of level bosses, we started off with a 64K version and then the programmer went back to the drawing board and came back with a 128K version, improving on almost everything. It runs at a slow but steady 25 frames per second and just goes to prove what every Amstrad fan already knew back in 1985, 6 and 7, the Amstrad CPC can scroll. Talking about scrolling, look at this scramble from the arcade translated down to the CPC. And it's an absolute thing of beauty. The graphics are detailed, the colors are bright, the speed is just arcade perfection. In fact, this really is a breath of fresh air. Before this, Amstrad owners had Killer Cobra. And whilst that was a fantastic, frantic, fast paced game, this conversion blows that to smithereens. How lucky are Amstrad owners to have this? I've seriously not been able to put it down. It's that good. Kudos to the programmer, and my god, long live the Amstrad CPC. I'm a massive sucker for puzzle games. I love Tetris. I love Klax. There was an old game on the Amstrad CPC I used to love, Pick and Pile. I don't know if anyone remembers Deflector from Gremlin Graphics. And there's the really good OP QA versus QA OP, the final battle. But this one, Betiled for me, grabs me by the short and curlies and really pulls me in. It's really good for the old grey matter as well. By the fifth level, your, your brain will be in overdrive. If you can make it past that point, you're probably a borderline brainiac. If you've not played this one, rush out, download it and play it ASAP. You won't regret it. This is the state of affairs for the Amstrad CPC in 2020. Fantastic game after fantastic game. It's a brilliant time to be alive and an Amstrad CPC fan. And they don't come much better than Baba's Palace. The graphics are absolutely brilliant. The animations above average. The colors and detail of the game complement everything. The enemy sprites look badass. And although it starts off easy, this gets seriously taxing as you get up to about level four, five, six, seven. I've actually completed this game. It took me a while. I think there was 50 levels. It looks basic, but it's got that vital ingredient, which is the playability. I absolutely deplored this game when it first came out. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I died at every second attempt. But then it suddenly dawned on me that there's nothing else like it on the Amstrad CPC. You don't really have a bullet hell shooter so I persevered with it put in the time went through a shed loads of lives 
and came out the other side thinking, this is absolutely brilliant. There's also lots of little strategies you pick up along the way. And the end of level bosses are either half the size or the full size of the screen. It's unbelievable stuff for an Amstrad. It's been converted to pretty much every 8-bit I know as well, so check it out. I still maintain there was nothing wrong with the original Bubble Bobble conversion from Firebird. It just needed music. But this is an absolute thing of wonder. One of the best arcade experiences is now available on the CPC. Or should I say has been since 2012. There's a bit of sprite flicker and the game is a little bit slower than I'd like. But seriously, what's not to like? This is Bubble Bobble for your CPC. Is it better than the Commodore 64 version or the ZX Spectrum 128K? I'm not so sure. What I can tell you is it makes the list and I absolutely love it. My three-year-old doesn't understand it, but my five-year-old plays this and she thinks it's great. Another game from the Alicante University CPC Retro Dev competition, I think. But this one reminds me of Magica, which is a game that came out a few years earlier. But there's enough difference about this to really get into it. There's loads of levels, the graphics look good. It's got that one more go appeal. I feel like I'm playing a legitimate 1980s arcade game. And uh, I love our little protagonist, Brick Brick, with his little limp, pathetic throw. If you're thinking to yourself, oh, I'm not sure I want to play that, don't play it. It's really addictive and you won't be able to stop. There's enough variety in the levels as well. The aliens practically throw themselves at you. You'll love it. Oh, I absolutely love this game. I so wanted it to be higher in my list, but the difficulty just kills me, cripples me every time. I've only ever been able to complete it once, and it just didn't need to be this difficult. They could have put a more casual option in there. Games have moved on since back in the day where you only had one life or you had to go right back to the start. But despite this, I still absolutely love it and it had to be in the list. The control is really tight. The graphics look really good. Everything's there, the sound effects, a good soundtrack as you go along. And again, it's one I keep coming back to. I must really love my punishment. The Lost Treasure. This is basically Rick Dangerous 3. That's what they should have called it. No idea why they went for that ridiculously long name. Look, it's Rick Dangerous, I'm telling you. The first thing anybody will notice about this game are the graphics. They're absolutely, well, they're a sight for sore eyes. It's a shame that the screen doesn't scroll or flick, but once you get used to the whole affair, for the large part, you don't even notice. I haven't completed this game yet, but I'm aware that it's quite big. And there's more adventure in this game than there are in most old commercial Amstrad CPC games of a similar ilk. So, kudos to Rick Dangerous 3. I recall the first time I played Dragon Attack and it absolutely blew me away. It's a vertical bullet hell shooter, but instead of taking on descending waves of aliens or God knows what, you take on dragons. It takes a bit of adjustment, but you won't put this one down until you finally complete it. Finally slay that last dragon. I never thought I'd see bullet patterns like this coming down at you, raining down on you um, on an Amstrad CPC. I thought wonders like this were only available or should only be available on something like a Sega Saturn. But this is absolutely fantastic, a true thing of beauty. I previously did a video on this when it first came out. No surprise, I absolutely loved it. I've since completed it. And also this is the updated version that includes extra graphics, smoke from the engine or tires. The gameplay is challenging. It runs on any 64K Amstrad CPC machine. And although I still prefer the old Wetley Mans on the Amstrad CPC and the Continental Circus, I still enjoy this. And we never really had a pole position uh, game on the CPC. So this kind of fits that gap, that long uh, gap that we, we all went without. So without question, this one was a shock, a surprise, but it makes the list. I'm a big fan of this game. It's got some graphical problems, i.e. when you try to jump in the air vertically, it kind of becomes a little bit of a choppy mess. 
but the rest of the action and, and game style more than makes up for it. There's a few instances where I did get stuck and needed to look up how to get past certain areas and I'm almost certain that if this had been released back in the day Amstrad Action would have given it a master game or an AA rave. It's just lovely to play, it's simple shoot 'em up action. There's good variety with the enemy sprites. The main protagonist is drawn really well and looks like he's hard as nails. He's got a bit of Jason about him. It's an absolute joy to play and it makes the list. Okay, so it's a specky game. It's archaic by today's standards, but it still plays an absolute blinder. And the Amstrad CPC back catalog is all the better for it. Seek out the fuel for your rocket and parts. Blast the enemy wide apart and get to the rocket. Take off and land and repeat. For me, this makes the list because it's one of the best games I ever played on the Speccy. And the conversion to the Amstrad CPC is no slouch either and plays just as good as the original. There's been some really great ports from the Speccy to the Amstrad of late. Uh, somebody years ago did Def Chase, 3D Def Chase, and it was absolutely brilliant. We've now got Ant Attack, a shoot 'em up called ZD Blast and Altair, and another classic, Maziax. This is one of my favourite games on the Amstrad. I put a lot of hours into this one. It's just simple, pure, arcade, unadulterated fun. The similarities are there with Brick Brick for all to see, but as I've stated before, there's nothing wrong with more of the same good stuff. You get a fantastic variety of levels. The graphics are pleasing to the eye. The music bounces along just nicely, and you get the sound effects as well. There's so many great games on the Amstrad now, but I still had to include this one in the list. If you've played this one and you like it as well, let me know in the comments section. It's one of those I just can't get enough of. Now we had the original Mega Blasters on the Amstrad CPC, but this is a sequel and update. And although there was only nine or 10 stages, there's absolutely nothing wrong with having two Bomberman clones on the Amstrad CPC. The graphics are beautiful, the music is haunting, the pickups varied, and the enemy deadly. These types of games really do come into their own when you play multiplayer. And although a massively reduced game to the original, whilst it lasts, it's absolutely every bit just as playable. The only thing I need now is an update. I still wait patiently with baby breath. It was Keith Goodyear, the programmer for Electric Dreams, Considering he was given hardly any time at all, he did a nay bad job for the Amstrad CPC port from the Speccy. But compared to the arcade original and the ZX Speccy conversion, the Amstrad CPC felt like you were wading through choppy treacle, devoured of all colour. So when this one popped up from Easter Egg, I couldn't believe my eyes. Although not perfect, we finally had a decent port of R-Type on the Amstrad CPC. The colour choice looks amazing, the music beating away in the background is authentic and the speed matches that of the ZX Speccy. Before this came out I was given a special beta release to test and although there were lots of problems whilst testing, I had one hell of a time playing this. The final version was everything I could hope for and although the graphics are done in mode 1, displaying limited colour, what you do get are highly detailed. This is brilliant for many reasons and it makes the list. I can imagine that the presentation and the colour and the screenshots might put some people off, but please play this game. It's really, really good. And as of today, there's a sequel. You may have noticed I like my shooters and Relentless is no exception. I'd have preferred music than the annoying shoot 'em up sound and the video capture hasn't quite captured how smooth this game is. But aside from that, if you haven't played this one or heard of it, it's a definite must. I like the graphics, there's a good challenge, enemy placements have been thought out really well, and although you'll complete it quite quickly, it's a fun roller coaster shoot 'em up ride whilst it lasts. The Amstrad CPC is getting a bit of a reputation for being a shoot 'em up system, and who am I to argue? Ah, Sub Hunter. I remember this one when it first came out. The 
graphical loading screens, the colourful loading screens were amazing. The parallax scrolling within the game, absolutely brilliant. The variety in the levels that you get as well. There's about 18 or 20 in total. There's little intermission screens that tell the story nicely. I have no idea why you're rescuing people at the bottom of the ocean, but it's a lot, a lot of fun. I believe this came out, came out on the Commodore 64 as well, and this might be uh, a port, a conversion of that onto the Amstrad. They've done a bloody good job, let me tell you. This reminds me of that level from the Untouchables, the game that Ocean converted to the, uh, the movie conversion to the Amstrad Commodore and Speccy. Plus, it's also a mix of Cobra, Stallone Cobra, with a bit of Robocop thrown in, if you like. And I have to say, they've done an amazing job. Sheer speed of the thing, the variety of sprites, the big tall buildings. This is an absolute picture. And although difficult at first, once you get the hang of it, it's great fun to play. What a fantastic little addition to the old humble Amstrad CPC. Ah, oh, another shooter, but with a difference. I absolutely love this game. The music and sound effects are so good that you have to turn up the belt with the volume. The enemy attack waves are absolutely savage. You've got to have your wits about you, keep your eye on the clock, and get those pickups at all costs. I guess it's a bit like Robotron or Smash TV, but it really is edge of the seat stuff and makes a nice change for the CPC. Here we go, down to the last tent. I love zombie. So invasions of the zombie monsters is a no-brainer really. It plays fabulously well. Reminds me of Goals and Ghosts and Ghosts and Goblins, but done really well for the Amstrad CPC. As always, these types of games involve a lot of timing, pixel perfect jumps, and leaps of faith. I come back to this one all the time. It's always there on standby, ready to load. Everything is just done brilliantly and plays to the Amstrad strengths. Number nine. The ZX Speccy original is now out on the Amstrad CPC and looking all the better for it. it takes the excellent ZX Spectrum version, gives it a new lick of paint and moves at electrifying pace. It makes the list because it's absolutely brilliant. The attention to detail and the care that's gone into this needs to be played to fully appreciate. If you like to map your games out like me, this is a heart back to the golden era where you had to use your imagination but at the same time still had bags of fun. Number eight, The Shadows of Sergoth. Now this was a shock to me when it first came out. I'm a massive fan of Eye of the Beholder and Dungeon Master on the Atari ST and the Commodore Amiga 500. And although we had Blood Witch back in the day, as good as it was, it was no Dungeon Master. But Shadows is absolutely brilliant. A triumph on the Amstrad CPC. Look at the pace, the speed of this thing. Unbelievable. Number seven, Operation Alexandra. This is the type of quality I'd have expected on the NES or the Sega Master System back in the day. But to see it play out before my very eyes on an Amstrad CPC is just a thing of beauty. The lights flicker, the color palette creepy, and the exploration harsh but fair. This is one of the best games of its type I've ever played on the Amstrad CPC. The only thing I can hope and wish for now is that someday, somehow, somebody does a sequel. Number six. Oh my God, nothing prepared me for this. A vertical scroller that plays to perfection. Owning an Amstrad CPC in 2021 is like having your very own arcade machine. This is not just one of the best shoot 'em ups on the Amstrad. I think it's one of the best shoot 'em ups across all of the 8 bits that I've ever played. I hope there's a few Commodore and uh, Specky veterans out there that have seen this top 40 and might be thinking, bloody hell, I underestimated the Amstrad CPC. I'm definitely checking it out. Number five exceeds my wildest dreams. The Sword of Iana. Just watch and listen to this. Majestic. Number four, 
Oh yes, the abduction of Oscar Z. These new games on the Amstrad are just going from strength to strength and this is all the proof you need. I'm yet to complete it, but every time I revisit, I just can't put it down. The video capture doesn't do it justice. It's massively smoother than this on a real Amstrad CPC. It's the stuff of nightmares, but at the same time, an absolute dream come true. If you haven't played this one yet, it's a must to download. Number three. Amstrad CPC fans have been blessed with Elcon 2020, otherwise known as Slap Fight. And just look at that. You'd be forgiven for thinking this is the actual arcade game. Instead, what we've got here is a highly accurate conversion of the arcade original. It's just as difficult, all the dip switches are in there, and once you've completed it on easy, you can go in hard. There's really nothing like this on the Amstra CPC, to this level of attention and detail. Kudos to the programmers, the musician, and the artist. Number two. It turns out you can be a pinball wizard on your Amstrad CPC, as it sure does play a mean pinball. You can put this next to the Amiga 500 version, side by side, and you'll hardly tell the difference. Everything that's in the Amiga has been carefully crafted for the Amstrad CPC as well. The color palette looks terrific and shows what the Amstrad CPC can actually do. If they can program this on the Amstrad, they can program anything. the Gran Turismo of the Amstrad CPC. Can't help get excited with statements like that, but then they go and show us this. I saw this and thought, I don't remember anything being wrong with the original arcade conversion of Wonder Boy on the Amstrad CPC. And then I went back and looked, and actually it's decisively ropey compared to this. This looks like a console port, like a Master System version. It's got that quality about it and the speed. The little extra animations. I've already played this one, Corsair. I did a video recently. It's brilliant, absolutely loved it. I'm looking forward to the full game on this one, but the future is bright for Amstrad CPC gaming. And COVID-19 seems to have accelerated the pace of games coming to the Amstrad CPC. So every cloud. I've played the demo and this one has been promised for ages. The only problem is I can't remember if this is a GX4000 exclusive or an Amstrad CPC, you know, the stock CPC. But fingers crossed it will work across all platforms. It looks bloody brilliant. Feeling excited about this one. And finally, guys, here we go. Number one, Orion Prime. This is one hell of a scary mother of a game. The smell of death is everywhere. It's got that alien's feel about it. It feels almost ghostly. The puzzles are brilliant. There's just nothing else like it on the Amstrad CPC. It's truly terrifying, especially when you get into the basements. Whatever you do, don't play this one with the lights off. I've really enjoyed doing this video, and until next time, bye!